everyone, Ryan Rubino here. I was assembling a high chair the other day, and as with most uh, furniture or things that are delivered, it comes unassembled and you gotta assemble it at home. And it comes with a little a tool that they include. Uh, this actually, I lost the tool that they provided, but it looked kind of similar to this one. And in, in this case, uh, the tool probably would work fine, but um, if you know me, I have a basement full of tools. I like woodworking. I like all sorts of projects around the house. So I have this, this Allen bit set that I got a number of years ago. And I think it's an interesting tool because it's the type of thing that I bet a lot of you don't didn't even know that this existed or it was an, an easy product to acquire. And for certain projects that require an Allen wrench, it makes the, the project exponentially faster and easier. You could attach it to your drill, you adjust the torque setting, and you literally could, could screw in one of these bolts in two seconds. So, you know, just a, an immense difference in uh, efficiency for this particular project. So that brings us to ROI. And uh, this, this chair took me probably about 15 minutes to put together. I think I, I'd estimate it probably would have taken me 45 plus if I, if I wasn't using um, this uh, Allen bit set with my cordless drill. Um, so that's about 30 minutes saved for this particular project. I would estimate I probably have about four similar types of projects or tasks per year um, that, that I use this, this bit set for. Uh, so if you take, you know, half an hour per project, four projects a year, uh, five years, um, you know, sometime it's gonna wear out and I might get need a new bit set. Uh, that's about 10 hours right there of savings. So I'm gonna value my time at around $100 an hour. You could argue more or less depending upon the day, um, but that makes for a thousand a thousand dollars. And I think this cost me maybe fifteen dollars on on Amazon. So uh, conservatively, I think that you could easily justify like a 60, 66 x ROI. Now I'm not trying to say that the expected ROI for an analytics platform should be sixty x. You know, probably five to ten x is is more the the target range that I think you would look for. But um, it, it is, it's to say that um, the, the ROI for an improved tool for a particular task is, is calculable and is, is real and is what um, other organizations and I'm sure yourself are using to try to justify an investment. So how does this relate to value-based care analytics? And I think there's a few really nice parallels. Um, the, the first of which is just is being you know, do you have the right tool for the job? And are you even aware of what tools are out there to, to, help, um, to help you improve? So say you take the example of um, generating and distributing PCP scorecards. It's something that, you know, just about any organization in value-based care needs to do. And often it's a really manual process. It involves, you know, Excel-based reports that are cobbled together. It takes teams of people probably the better part of the month just trying to put these things together, riddled with errors, um, and that you know they're not necessarily highly trusted. Um, in this case, Arcadia has a very specific application and tool that was purpose-built for building and distributing PCP course scorecards. It has templated-based reports that are, you know, that have kind of been cultivated over many years uh, by other organizations, and it's it's just the right tool for the for the job. And um, if you don't have something like this, you know, we, we conservatively estimate it could make your teams 75% more efficient for that particular task. And I think there are a lot of other examples that do you have the right tool for whatever you're trying to, to accomplish. Um, I think the, the other thing to consider here too is just what are the types of ROI? So for the most part in this video, I've talked about kind of like staffing operational efficiencies. You know, the other common targets of ROI that, that organizations are going after are associated with risk adjustment, are associated with quality, and are associated with a number of kind of key target costs and utilization areas that are, you know, commonly, you know, tracked and pursued by other organizations that are involved in value-based care. You, you are able to move the needle on them, and they have very calculable results that, that help substantiate you know, ROI projections if you're looking to put new tools and, and technology in place. 
I hope you enjoyed this. If you want any advice about random tools around the house, please let me know. Or if you want advice about tools for value-based care analytics, uh, please also let me know if you'd like to talk that through. And, and you know, furthermore, if you'd like to look and evaluate at what um, a return on investment could look like for your particular organization with, with kind of the, the business uh, scope of business that you have in front of you, um, please let me know as well, and, and I could work through that and help you help you think through how how you may be able to estimate some of that for for your organization. Thanks a lot for listening, and have a great day. Mm -hmm.